it's it, it uses a volley projectile instead of a rocketed projectile, so the the Piot will shoot up an arc, which means if it's a moving target, the target can potentially move out of the way. Gotcha. You'll see it here sh here soon. Uh, it used to be really good against infantry, unfortunately, in the last patch, but that's kind of been fixed somewhat. Oh yeah, I didn't even mention it yet. We're we're playing on the beta, by the way. Any, anybody viewing this, this is a beta replay. I I, <laughs> I, I, I kind of forget to mention that stuff, uh, because uh, obviously I cast games from all different versions and whatnot. But uh, yeah, and by the way, you were telling me that you had a hand in revamping this map for the beta a little bit before. Yeah, they, really, this map was. It was one of the ones that everybody wanted to see redone. There was probably 10 different versions of it <laughs> when we were done, and we just all kind of had our own and uh, kind of mixed them all together and made what seemed to be the best. We see a valiant charge going on right now here by these flamethrower pioneers moving in, occupying the building, making way for the Volksgrandeers to come in and put some firepower down on these guys. Uh, obviously, you know, threatening that headquarters a little bit with fire as well as, uh, as you mentioned before, the biggest weakness uh, is the armor type uh, for all of the Brits. Uh, to fire there. And uh, the anti-tank gun moving in too. Ooh, that's not good at all. The flamers do do decent damage to the trucks as well. Yeah, those trucks are getting picked. You can see he's picking that truck up right now, getting him out of yeah, range. Yeah, which is almost kind of a bad thing. Trucks take more damage when they're unpacked or, or in the middle of unpacking, so that truck's going to go down most likely. Oh, God. Poor truck. Run, minivan. Oh, God. There goes the truck. Uh, so, by the way, for our new players out there, uh, how does the dynamic work when you lose your home base? You obviously just have to buy a new one here. Yep, it's drive it uh, off center. 450 manpower, I believe. Yep. Uh, no, 400. 400, yep, gotcha. Yeah. And it just wheels right back on. All right, well, that's that's a humongous setback there late game. So uh, it seems like our, our, our German player is having no problems kind of doing this. But honestly, you know... Um, Honestly, though, uh, I keep wanting to call him the British player, but I will just call him Wilson and treat him with the proper respect that he deserves. Uh, has, it th at the very least, managed to hold most of this map uh, for a long time. So he's had at least a, a good amount of an economic advantage here. Uh, if yeah, not I'm surprised uh, Bio has not used those motorcycles to just swipe off that lieutenant from back camping him. Yeah, it seems like they're just kind of being still here. I guess he's trying still to defend his uh, heavy machine gun mostly. Uh, but for the first time so far this game, uh, it looks like uh, Biosparks does have control of the victory point. Uh, his his Grenadiers over here on the left-hand side capturing stuff. And you had mentioned Grenadiers being particularly effective uh, against Brits too, I believe. Um, well, probably the most common strat you'll see is just a straight Gren spam strat, where you, um, you just spam a bunch of V3 Grenadiers with Shreks, and they just tend to beat just about everything that the Brits have to throw at them. And are you talking like medical bunkers defensive style as well? Or is um, it not even needed? Yeah, med bunker helps definitely. Because nice. Brits don't have an effective counter to a bunker. Unless you have a mortar pit or went commandos for demos. Gotcha. Uh, so at this phase, uh, he's finally set down to capture the other victory points, and honestly, it, it's just one of those weird rules of thumb. But like, uh, it sounds kind of silly, but like you can, I can kind of tell that players are good when they don't worry about victory points early game. And you can see that only now that the lines have been drawn in the sand, and now finally, like progress has halted a little bit, have people actually started capturing victory points. Here he's got a still on the field, so he went blitzkrieg. Gotcha. The stud has been moved up to four CPs in the latest patch, so uh, it comes out quite a bit earlier than it used to. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and jump down to Biospark's point of view for a little bit here and just kind of see. We do have infantry assault team and urban... Uh, sorry, our urban assault support is well out there, so yeah, There's Mr. The commandos. Stuff. Commandos just came out on the right side of the map. They're 560 manpower. They'll drop anywhere. Oh, I just the missed enemy. the glider driving in there, of course. Yeah. There we go. I'm sure there'll be more. Yay, but, commandos. Uh, they drop anywhere except for the enemy's space, and uh, they're just probably the best anti-infantry in the game out of the box. Yeah, I'm taking a look at them right now, and so uh, the commando tree uh, is the is the tree that he's picked right now. Obviously, oh, the stew is coming straight at them. Uh, but so uh, obviously, commando tree has commandos in it. What other sort of features are there for the commandos, or what uh, what else is you know typically picked? Um, well, the right side of it is, so I think it's. <laughs> 
<laughs> I can't think of it now, but commandos, uh, artillery. It does have an off-map artillery. Um, it also has um, the ability. It tells you like what your opponent is doing, kind of. Like it'll say your opponent has just gotten vet three tanks, for example. Oh, cool. Or it just produced uh, a panther. It'll it'll alert you to those things. Oh, nice. Some uh, intelligence there. I guess that kind of makes sense because the Brits were in World War II. The Brits were responsible for the Enigma machine, which decoded the Germans, uh, decoded their transmissions and whatnot. Sorry, I'm a math geek. Everybody knows I'm a math geek, and there was a lot of math. <laughs> Alan Turing, uh, one of the forefathers of the modern computer, uh, invented the Enigma machine for World War II. All sorts of fun. All, all my fun World War II history facts get in here. Anyhow. Uh, so, a uh, lot of progress being made on the left side. Not a lot, but, you know, reasonable progress from the beginning of the game right now for BioSparks. Uh, meanwhile, uh, oh no! Motorcycle gets wrecked right there. Hit a mine, actually. Mine goes down. Kaboom. Uh, Brits aren't particularly known for mines, so it, it tends to take a lot of word players by surprise. Taking a look around here, we see our stew just got a couple of repairs, came back. Uh, the stew had a little bit of a fight earlier with the uh, <laughs> with the sappers there, and the sappers uh, hit pretty hard when they do hit. Well, because they're projectile based, um, sometimes it tends to go up and hit the top of the tank, and it counts as a rear armor shot. Nice, yeah, that's exactly what it looked like. Man, that oh, stew is time. just having a blast today. Oh, pun intended. No, I did not mean that. Uh, but I love seeing, I, I call it stew, I know it's probably stuh, or I don't know what you do with the aid, really, honestly. Uh, but that's my own misguided pronunciation there. Uh, I'm apologizing. Uh, but I love seeing that thing go to town on some infantry there. Uh, so British progression right now. I'm kind of I'm kind of losing track of all the things that he's up to right now. Uh, let me uh, take take a look at his army tab right now. We can see uh, it does look like he's got a bunch of Tommies out there. He's got the Sappers. Uh, he does have a uh, his commandos right now are retreating back to his base, but he's pretty much where he's at as far as what we've been seeing so far. Yeah, he hasn't built um, a captain, so he, it's not he's not taking up to the armor command truck yet. Glider with Tetrarch, so that's now his next uh, commando option available as well. Yeah. Tetrarchs are little mini tanks, but they're really fast, and they can be upgraded to something called a Little John adapter, which makes them penetrate armor actually pretty well. <laughs> oh, Brits are so proper. I, I just like their names for everything. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, little the Little John adapter. Little John, why not? Yeah. Uh, so the stew is continuing to wreck away at this building, its own building, unfortunately, there. Now, here come the commandos. Okay, so commandos are shining away here. Uh, they just finished, uh, whoa, never mind. Stu is on top of that. Uh, he's got nothing to say more about that, apparently. Commandos also have a smoke ability. Um, it's disabled in the first 30 seconds or so after you drop them, because people used to always drop them and then pop smoke and they go invisible, and then you never know where they are until, like, five seconds later and everything dies. <laughs> So they made it so they had to wait, but uh, they can pop smoke and it, it's like a smoke screen and they go invisible for about five seconds, usually to close range because they're most effective up front. Like does up does it affect other units or just themselves? Just them. Cool. They, not, they also lay demo charges, which is a fun thing to do. They can put them actually anywhere on like the American demo charge, so it can be in the middle of a road or you know wherever. Oh, nice. Yeah, I really, I really like this early, uh, the early stew or stu usage uh, going on right here <laughs> by BioSparks. Uh, that seems to have paid off uh, quite a lot of dividends so far. Here's the Tetrarch, and he is getting a little John adapter. Oh, there it is. Oh, that thing is cute. Isn't it? <laughs> it's just yes. a little button. And so the little John adapter is the anti-armor, so obviously he's hoping to flank at some point later on in the game the stew and kind of help out with that a little bit yeah how effective this, is this thing the stew damage? isn't particularly great against uh, armor uh-huh oh here comes the commandos in the middle they're gonna wreck shop look at this it's just insane against non-vetted grens and an mg they're just gonna destroy everything wow that is pretty serious there. Uh, having no luck with the hand grenades there in response. Uh, the simultaneous commando attack uh, combined with the Tetrarch right there. That's putting some serious pressure on the middle here. And, uh, It'd be great if you could grab this MG42. It would really help him keep his base from being pinned. 
Uh, the stew is going to show up right now and try to put an end to this. I love how they're taking cover between the buildings here, taking advantage of that uh, projectile arc there that's just going to hit the scenery instead. Not bad. Uh, but they have to move at some point here. He's going to get a direct shot on them. Oh, that's... Oh, and the sniper gets the last guy. Oh, that was unfortunate. <laughs> Wilson's doing a good job with his recons here, harassing constantly on the right. That pack is really going to be the end of that uh, that Tetrarch, though. He's not careful. Yeah, how uh, on terms of toughness, how, how how tough is a Tetrarch compared to, say, I don't know, a, you know, a Sherman or something? Is it, is um, it like I'd the say weaker, the it's weakest more of the like things? it's more like an M8. And more okay, yeah, way more like a Greyhound then. Yeah, gotcha. But it will go down to probably two shots or three shots. So that pack, I don't know. Pack's got a pretty considerable nerf in this patch. They only have one cloak shot. Which means they don't have the damage bonus or the accuracy bonus on the shots after the first, so they tend to miss a lot. Nice. It's not bad. Yes. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was a little bit too much before this patch. So. so, wow, God, that Stu is just doing phenomenal. Twenty-one kills so far, uh, doing a phenomenal job versus the infantry-based Brits uh, so far in this game. Uh, let's see, so uh, we're at 421 points right now for Wilson, 355 uh, for BioSparks. Uh, Wilson's doing a great job staying in this game. It really Oof, just... Man. You see how look at that little John adapter penetrates? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Armor. Oh. Let me take... Wow, that is a lot of damage. I just caught it on the second shot. I thought he was maybe wounded when that started off there. Oh, that's unfortunate there. We were just seeing some uh, brutal, brutal Brits being blown apart here. I was going to say, the Brits seem to be taking a real, real beating this game, uh, but he's doing a great job of just staying on top of this game. I mean, staying on top of caps, uh, staying on top of victory points. Uh, stuff is looking good. He did get out a second Tetra. It's going to make that a little bit more hesitant. Oh, my God, there's a Tiger on the field, though. Damn. Let me take a look. I'm going to jump down to Biosparks because obviously I've been losing track of his command points ability. Yeah, he just texts straight up to the Armored Assault Force. Tiger is kind of hard to mess with there. Tiger is pretty much the king of everything except for perhaps maybe the King Tiger. Yeah, especially when he doesn't have um, a brand upgrade. The brand upgrade is a Tommy upgrade that you can get that will essentially freeze any armor in its tracks and it'll just stop it. It's called buttoning. Oh, the buttoning. Yeah, I always thought yeah. that was kind of goofy. And it's uh, it's really annoying as a wear player, but it's something you need to fight heavy. Like yeah, this. it's like I guess it's like pinning for pinning for vehicles, right? Yep. I don't know where the term button comes from. I had never heard of it until I played this game. The enemy is seizing our territory. Uh, so continuing the side capture on the left hand side, it looks like he's taking care of that victory point. Uh, he's, he's responding with a seventeen pounder near his uh, HQ truck. 17 is an AT emplacement. I'm curious if that Tetrarch's going to be trapped in between the truck and the 17, though. Oh, yeah, that is kind of goofy. Yeah, 17 pounder, so would you equate that to maybe like a, like a Flak 88 or something to that effect? Um, not quite as much damage, but it has very good penetration. Nice. Yeah, and it's also not omnidirectional, you have to point it. It's got an arc of fire, like an MG. Oh, gotcha. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So howitzer style. Tiger's gonna get this tetrarch on the right. Oh god, little tetrarch. Oh. He's trying his best to deal with these guys, but no, he is completely out of control and driven directly into a telephone pole. Uh, yeah, that tank had no problem with that whatsoever. Yeah, it was actually kind of an entertaining thing that you would see every once in a while. Um, a couple of patches ago, as people would build just a whole bunch of tetrarchs. And you'd see like five tetrarchs just swarm a panther and take it down. 